Well, you just have, kind of have to wait and see. Okay. So we're going to talk about calorimetry, okay. which is what we're going to do a lab on next okay. week. And so we need to know what calorimetry is before, okay. you know, because that would help, right? Right. Okay. So when we're doing calorimetry, basically calorimetry means calorie measuring. Okay, and calorie is a heat unit. Okay. And the heat, one calorie, we know this from before, is 4.18 joules. Really, we're going to deal with the joules. We're not going to deal with the calories. But the term comes from the old term, calories. That's why we have it. So basically, the basic idea in calorimetry is that the heat gained by one object equals the heat lost by another. Okay, and we're going to measure that heat. That's the idea. Okay. And this is basically law of conservation of energy. Energy may neither be created nor destroyed. Okay. See how that works? Yeah. See so it. what we're going to do is we're going to have some sort of cup, and it's going to be filled with some sort of water, generally. And we could do anything. We can insert some sort of, we don't want an arrow in. So we're going to take this object and we are going to put it into our fluid. And what's going to happen is the heat from the one object, let's change this to a nice bright color so we can see this, the heat from one object is going to flow into the other. And that those amounts of heats are going to be the same. So we're going to know this temperature. We know the temperature of the water. We also know the starting temperature of the object. Now there's a couple things we could be doing. Okay, in chemistry, do you remember putting a little piece of metal into the water, the hot piece of metal into the water, and you measured its heat capacity, calculated yeah. its heat capacity? So that's one thing we could do, but you already did that. So what we're going to do is this little object that we suck in here is going to be an ice cube, and we're going to melt the ice cube. Okay. Okay, so what's our ice cube going to do when we put it in the water? Melt. It's going to melt, right? Yeah. So what we're going to calculate is the heat of fusion of the water. That's our basic idea is what is this heat of fusion you have of to the move water. That. There you go. <laughs> what is the heat of fusion of water? That's what we're looking for. So how are we going to find out how much heat the water gained? Is the water changing its temperature? No. Yes. Yes. Because we're going to put an ice cube in it, right? Right, right, right. Right? right? right we're going right. to put an ice cube in it. So the water is going to change its temperature. And so what equation do we use when we're changing temperatures? Well, I don't know. I have to look at my notes. Well, go look at your notes. <laughs> Q equals MC delta T. Oh, okay? right. Of course. So the course. Q for the water is MC delta T. Okay. The Q for the ice. What is the ice going to do again? What do we say? Melt. It's going to melt. How are we going to find out how much heat is required to melt it? Q equals, if it's not MC delta T, it's... The other one. The other one. <laughs> M times L. Remember, we were solving for ML fusion? Mm-hmm. Okay. And what did we say was true, had to be true about these two heats? Oh, that they were the same. They were the same. Because <laughs> the heat it. gained by one is equal to the heat of lost course. by the other. Got okay? it. Yeah, so... We're in the video. So, the MC delta T for the water will equal the ML for the ice. Because they're the same temp. Because they, they have the same, same Qs. The heats are the same. The two Qs are the same. Yeah. What you did in chemistry is that you had water and a metal, 
and both of these guys changed their temperature. So you had MC delta T for the water equaled MC delta T for the metal. Oh, okay. Okay, so these are two different ways that we could use calorimetry. We can use it to, we can use the heat gained by the water to find out how much energy was required to melt the ice, or we can use the heat gained or lost by the water to find out the heat gained by the metal. And either way, we can solve for our unknown variable, okay. either C or L. Okay? Yeah. Good to go? Yeah. All right, so we are going to apply this in practice problems, and then we're going to apply it in our lab. Okay, cool. All see right, you. we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Hmm.